Hello, Maker Melissa with Maker Melissa's Lab. In this video, we're going to be upgrading the MMU2S onto my Prusa i3 MK3S printer. This is the second video in the series. The first video was the initial build of the 3D printer cabinet. This video will be installing this. And in my next video, I'll be finishing off the printer cabinet with a few upgrades that were not in the original guide. Let's get started. In this step, we're going to be disassembling the extruder. I needed to make sure the filament was unloaded and the steel sheet was removed and the power was unplugged before I started. The printer says it comes with all the tools necessary and it does come with many of them, but I found a pair of flush cutters helps with releasing the zip ties on there. You just got to be careful that you don't clip any of the wires. To make this a little easier, I'm going to go ahead and start by removing the filament holder from here because we won't need this anymore. Next, I'm going to go ahead and open the little electronics box here so that I can access the cables. I will need to remove the two screws that are holding on the cable that goes to the extruder. I didn't wire tie any of these together, but if you do happen to have any, then you can take some flush cutters and very carefully cut the wire tie. You will also want to make sure that you cut the zip ties that are attaching the cable to the extruder. Make sure to cut all five of them. Once that is done, make sure to disconnect the filament sensor cable, which is the one with the black, red, and white wires. There are four short screws on the back of the filament sensor. You'll want to release all four of these screws here. Once that is done, make sure to move this plate back about one centimeter. You should be able to move the wires a little bit here. Next, remove the filament sensor cover here by removing the screw first and lifting the cover off. Release the idler screw, but you can leave it in the extruder for now. Next, remove the screw from the IR filament sensor, unplug it and set it aside. Make sure to keep it safe because you will need it later. Next, there's a couple of screws on the front here, right underneath the stepper motor. You'll want to turn those a few times in order to release them. Finally, remove all the screws from the hot end fan here. Behind the fan, there's a screw there. You'll want to go ahead and release that to remove the extruder body. Go ahead and remove the screw on the back here that's holding the extruder idler in place. And loosen the one on the right just to create a slight gap so that it comes off. Next, we'll want to use one of the wrenches to go ahead and push this little axle out so that we can remove the little gear. Finally, you want to gently tug on this wire and it should move without too much resistance and you should see the cable assembly move with it. You need to remove this piece here with the steel ball in it and carefully set it aside. In its place, put in this orange piece here that came with the MMU2S upgrade. For the next step, we're going to want to gather these parts that look like this. There's three printed parts. You got the filament sensor that came out of the printer along with the screw. It has an M3 nut, an M3 by 10 millimeter bolt, and an M3 by 18 millimeter bolt. Take the wire, make sure to feed it up through this part so it's hanging out the side. Attach the filament sensor so that the sensor is pointing the opposite direction of the tab with the ground facing towards you. Lay it in here so that it's looping back on itself. Now take this cover, make sure it is oriented in this direction. Put it in here. You want to kind of push a little bit firmly on the screw as you turn it so that it catches, then screw it in. Once that is done, you'll want to feed the wire down this side. Next, take this piece, take the hex nut, and take the M3 by 10. Stick the M3 by 10 through here, screw the hex nut on, line it up with the appropriate place on the hole, and tighten it into place. This will help press fit it. Once that's done, remove the screw. Place the part with the wire on it so that the part with the heated thread insert 
is in place like that and place the M3 by 10 bolt back in there, tightening it onto that hex screw that you just put in. Take the M3 by 18, place it in the other hole and tighten it down onto that orange piece that you inserted earlier. Now that this is all in place, we'll want to go ahead and retighten all of the screws that we loosened earlier. I'll start with the screws up front underneath the stepper motor. I'll tighten the one on the inside next. Then I'll want to tighten the screws back on the fan here, making sure the longer one is in the lower right hand corner. Be very careful that when you are inserting the wire, make sure it's not rubbing on the smooth rod. The shorter screws on the fan are M3 by 14s, and the longer one is an M3 by 18. For this next step, we'll need the gear we removed out of the extruder, the axle, the two bearings that were inside of it, one of the M3 by 40s that we removed out of the extruder earlier, a new M3 hex nut, and the part that looks like this. First, we'll want to start by placing the hex nut in here. We'll want to use one of the available screws to help pull through nice and straight and press fit it into place. I started by sliding my hex driver into here to help clear out the way. Place the gear with the teeth on the left and then I push the axle through and with just a little bit of pressure I was able to get it to sit so that the gear still spins nicely. Next we'll take this piece which is a little new idler door. We'll put it in here and slide the bolt in to act as a lever. We'll go ahead and tighten the screw here. After that's done, we'll want to tighten it from the other side. The screw should be slightly below the surface on the other side of the extruder here. Next, we'll want to take four screws and reattach the back cover here. You may want to adjust the screw's tension so that the X carriage is still able to slide pretty freely. Next we'll want to insert some zip ties. I found it easiest to attach the wires at the bottom first, making sure there's plenty of tension, followed by attaching them at the top here, starting with the one closest to the extruder. Once that is done, be sure to clip the zip ties so that they do not obstruct the X carriage. The E-axis modifications are now complete. In this step, we're going to assemble the idler body, and we're going to start with this piece here. We start by ins inserting the bearing at the very top here, and inserting this little piece here, and pushing it all the way in so that it goes through the bearing itself. Go ahead and install all five bearings. Make sure the bearings spin freely on all five of them. In one case, this bearing was a little bit stuck to the side and I used some pliers to kind of push it back to the middle and now it spins freely. Next, we'll want to install these square M3 nuts. Next, insert the M3 by 10 bolts into those nuts, but don't tighten them all the way. These are going to act as a set screw in order to keep it on the shaft of the motor. Finally, take the remaining bearing and push it in on the end here. It may help to push it down on a flat surface in order to get it to go in there flush. Go ahead and set that aside for now. Next, we'll want to take the remainder of the hardware from the bag, this big orange piece, and the motor that's either labeled extruder or idler. We'll want to take the square nuts and put them into the idler body and using some pliers or a hex key and making sure they are centered in the hole. Next we'll want to take the idler body and put the idler in it making sure these screws are lined up on this side and we'll want to make sure that it will, is able to rotate. Next we're going to take the motor and with the flat side of the shaft, we want to make sure it is against the screws in the idler itself. Make sure the wires on the motor are sticking up, and we're going to go ahead and install two of the screws in the top here. Turn the idler body over and install two more screws into the bottom of the stepper motor. In this case, it may be best to use the 
included Allen key because it has this indent here which allows you to use it at an angle. Next you'll want to insert the remaining shaft into the end here using the pliers. Install a screw here to keep it in place. Once that's done, you want to make sure it can rotate without grinding against the edge. In this case, I haven't pushed it on far enough, so I pushed it over a little bit more. Now it rotates very smoothly. Once that's done, you'll want to tighten these screws here onto the flat side of the shaft. Assembly of the idler should be now complete and it should turn without too much resistance. In this next step, we're going to prepare the pulley body. You'll need 10 of these square M3 nuts. We'll start by inserting them into the top here and then pushing them down with one of the Allen keys. Next, we'll place them in the top here and push them into place as well. And we'll place them in the bottoms for the last part of this step. There's a total of three on each side. For the next part, we're going to want five of these type of gears, four M3 by 10 screws, and a bearing. We'll start by inserting the bearing. You want to carefully insert it into the end here. Take the motor shaft and slide it with the gear teeth towards the motor itself. You may need to loosen the screws on here. Insert the motor with all five pulleys on it into the bearing. Make sure the wiring harness is going out to the side. And again, you'll want to install two screws on the top of the motor and two screws on the underside. Next, you'll want to take a fairly straight piece of filament. I'm using the silver filament that came with my printer. Insert it through the filament guides, ensuring that it aligns with the teeth, and go ahead and tighten the pulley down. Continue doing that for all five of them. Next, we'll want to take five PTFE tubes and insert them into this little area right here in the front. Take the piece that looks like this and insert it with the five holes on top. After that, take four M3 by 10 bolts and insert them into the front right below the tubes. Next, we want to take the piece that looks like this, the two tubes, and the remaining nuts in the bag. There should be six square nuts and one hex nut. We'll go ahead and insert one over here for the find up probe, two in the top here, and we'll push those in. We'll want to take a long screw out of the bag, insert the hex nut onto that long screw, and then pull it in. and unscrew the screw out of there. Insert the nuts in the remaining holes, pushing in with a wrench and making sure they are centered. One of the holes is in this larger slot and you'll need to insert it into the top. Next, you'll want to insert the tubing into these holes. You'll need seven of the M3 by 10 screws, the orange piece that looks like this, the two shafts, and the final motor. Go ahead and remove the nut off of the lead screw of the motor, and we'll go ahead and place it on to this orange piece that looks like this, and place two of the M3 screws into the nut and tighten them down. It may help to insert one of the shafts in push the hex nut up and tighten it down. Next, we're gonna take this piece, place it on this flat edge, and then install it with two more screws. Next, we're going to install the filament cutter in here, and we're gonna install it on this side. You wanna install it so that the blade appears to point down and at a slight angle like this. Carefully place this piece on top, being sure not to cut yourself. and secure with two M3 screws. Next, take the pulley body, set it up so it's oriented this way, and install the shafts into the top and bottom, sliding through the tubes on the filament cutter assembly. 
may want to slide the blade back and forth a few times. Next we'll want to install the motor, sliding it into here, making sure that the wires are facing up, and screw in the lead screw all the way. Next we'll want to secure the motor in with three of the M3 screws. And this step we're going to insert the find a probe, but before we do we want to place the steel ball into the hole. Insert this so there's about six to seven millimeters sticking out lightly tighten this screw in here and then take a piece of the filament and push it in. We want to go ahead and push it down until it hits the filament. Turn it so that it's 90 degrees from where it's at and then lift it up slightly until you hear a click and then go ahead and tighten the screw down. We're going to turn the assembly so that the shaft of the motor is facing towards you. We're going to go ahead and insert a bearing into this area here. If you have any trouble inserting the bearing, you can shave it down a little bit with an X-Acto knife. But be careful not to make the hole too big or else the bearing will fall out. Go ahead and do the same thing on the other side here. Next we're going to go ahead and take the first part that we built, place it on top, and push the extra shafts that we have to hold it as pins. We should do in one of the, each of the bearings that we just installed. Finally, we will secure the shafts in place using some screws that are placed right above it. We'll place these screws with springs on it into these holes and tighten it against the nuts in order to provide some tension. The screws should be tightened so they're just below the surface here. And this next step will be assembling the electronics. We'll need the board, we'll need this orange piece, we'll need three hex nuts and three of the M3 by six screws. Let's go ahead like usual and install the hex nuts using the press fitting technique. After we've gone ahead and press fitted all three of the nuts in, we're going to go ahead and flip it over, set the board and gently push the buttons through, and then we'll secure the board on with the remaining three screws here. Next we're going to go ahead and insert all the cables into the board, starting with this cable, this cable, the find a probe, This motor, this one is next, and finally the one on the other side. Next we're going to take the electronics, flip it around so all the cables are pointing down, and we will secure it in place on here using M3 by 18 screws. Next, starting with the find a probe, we will carefully work our way around. If you need to temporarily unplug one of the wires from here in order to manage this a little bit better, you can carefully slip your finger under and pull a tab back and then pull the cable down. Start by attaching wire ties here and here. Next we're going to secure about 10 centimeters or 4 inches into this textile wrap here. After that we're going to slide the textile wrap towards here. Then we're going to take that textile wrap and the wires that are right around there. We're going to secure that all together with another zip tie. Finally we're going to take the remaining motor wire and the bundle and we're going to secure that all again. Let's just slide it right in here, around the wires, and around the cable wrap. Cut the cable ties short, and finish securing these two wires throughout the rest of the cable wrap. When you finish, the completed assembly should look like this. Next, we're going to flip the unit over 
and we're going to take one of these M3 by 18 bolts, slide it into the hole, push it down, unscrew it, kind of pull out the screw. Repeat on all four of those. Flip the unit back over, take one of the five long PTFE tubes, stick it into the hole, and repeat for the remaining four tubes. Take the plate, place it with the wider end towards the tubes, and secure that in place with four M3 by 18 screws. What seemed to work really well for me was taking one of the longer screws from the spare parts bag, using it to hold the nut in place while I screwed it in with a hex driver on the other side. You may want to take a roll of filament and try feeding the filament through the tube just to ensure alignment before finally tightening down the plate. Finally, we're going to want to attach the mounting brackets with the hooks on the mounting bracket toward the side with the lead screw. Go ahead and secure that with four M3 by 12 screws. Now that you have both of the brackets secure, we're going to move that out of the way. Grab the 360 millimeter PTFE tube and slide the little ends on and make sure they kind of snap into place. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and screw one side of these into the threaded insert on here. Next, we're going to take the whole assembly and place it on the back of the printer here that's away from the, the lead screws and kind of snap it into place. We're going to go ahead and attach one end on here and use the smaller end of the wrench to tighten it. And once that's in place, we'll just push the PTFE tube in until we feel it snug and secure. We'll go ahead and tighten it on the MMU unit as well. Next, you have a couple of different options. You can either remove the door and use the included pliers to cut off the corner here, or you can take some flush cutters and do it with the door attached. What we're trying to do is make room for the new cable bundle to go right into the corner here. Next, we're going to go ahead and reinstall this cable retainer here. Next, we're going to want to loosen the screws all the way on the left side. Then we're going to want to take the two clips on this side and attach them to the appropriate colors with the screws are and tighten them down. I placed red on the left and black on the right. Next, reinsert the filament sensor where it was originally on the printer and place the other new connector right above it in the connector with the orange retainer in it, making sure that the brown wire is on top of the white wire. Once that's done, if you haven't already, you may want to go ahead and use some of the extra zip ties and clean up some of the wiring in there. In my case, since I didn't originally do that, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. There, it's much better now. Finally, let's go ahead and close up the door and tighten the screw. Next, we're going to go ahead and skip the spool holder setup because the cabinet has an integrated spool holder and I'm going to go ahead and assemble the buffer. There should be 10 of each of the types of hardware, which is an M3 by 40 bolt, an M3 by 12 bolt, and M3 hex nuts. I've gone ahead and laid out all the parts and I'm going to go ahead and start by peeling this plastic off of the buffer sheets, which is intended to protect them from scratching. After removing the protected film, you want to take the longer piece here with the two holes facing to the right, and we want to go ahead and insert the first sheet into it. We're going to go ahead and continue inserting the remainder of the sheets into each of the slots here. They should be symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which direction they're facing. Once that's done, go ahead and insert the M3 by 40 screws into the holes. After that, we're going to place the top piece on. The two holes should also go to the right. After that, we want to align the holes and insert two more of these M3 by 40 screws. Finally, we want to go ahead 
and put some nuts on the other side. You should only need to tighten them enough so that the end of the bolt is flush with the face of the nut. We only want to tighten it a small amount in order to prevent any kind of a warping, which would render the buffer useless if they're not in parallel. If you do happen to over tighten it, just go ahead and back off on the screws and it should be fine. Once you have the sheets all parallel, go ahead and take three of these pieces and we're going to go ahead and insert them on this side of it, making sure that the hex nut is facing the same direction as on the top and bottom pieces. Next we're going to go ahead and do the other side and we're going to start by placing the piece that looks like the other side ones on the top, ensuring that the hex nut is facing the same direction as the other ones. And we're also going to place these hook type pieces. And the hook should face towards the outside with the hex nut side of it, which is also the hook side facing towards the other ones as well. Once you have those in place, go ahead and take the remaining six hex nuts and place them on just like you did for the top and bottom. Next, we want to take these shorter 150 millimeter PTFE tubes and insert them. You should see them slide in and stick out the inside of the buffer about two to three millimeters. After you've secured each one, go ahead and take an M3 by 12 screw and secure that PTFE tube in there with it. Go ahead and repeat that for all five tubes. Once you've finished that, go ahead and take a piece of filament and slide it in each tube, ensuring that it's able to pass through without any obstruction. There, we are all finished with this video. I've gone ahead and finished assembling the buffer, and I've assembled the MMU-2S. And in the next video, we're going to go ahead and hook those all up into the cabinet, including removing the power supply, putting the brace there, attaching this to the top, putting rollers. I have anti-vibration feed. I'm going to be stacking three tables high. It recommends not doing that so much so that you can access the buffer, but I'm pretty tall, so I'm not too concerned. And so I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Be sure to hit like if you liked it, subscribe if you aren't already, and you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video.